Okay, let's do this. You know what's a little crazy? Um, I like, I've been a dancer all my life. I cheered for the NCAA in college and I cheered for the NFL for five seasons and those things never made me nervous, but I'm like low key nervous <laughs> to, you know, start creating content for YouTube. Um, but with all that said, my name is Candice. Um, I'm a senior software engineer and a dance educator. Um, let's just throw out the basics. I'm 26 years old, born, raised, educated in Prince George's County, Maryland, currently reside in PG County, Maryland. And I wanted to get on here and really just, I felt compelled over the past couple of months, um, weeks, especially most recently, and I'll get into why and so starting creating more um content around an industry that you know kind of takes over the bulk of my life um i've been super publicly known as like a dancer or a cheerleader and like second most as an engineer but i've always thought that was kind of not kind of but like actually backwards because my full-time job is as an engineer i majored in computer science and so engineering tech all that stuff is really you know a really big proponent of my life and especially as a black woman here in pg county the dc area it's something that absolutely shapes you know my life and everything that i do day to day so i just really want to come on here and talk about my experience um in tech i put a couple um a question prompt on my instagram which by the way if you're not following me already i'm on instagram at candace c c-a-n-d-e-s-s-c-e-e -E. um just to kind of kick off and get to know me but before we do that i want to get into just like my story um, my evolution with tech, how I got into the industry, how I'm currently doing in the industry. And actually, um, there's going to be a surprise for my next video. I'm going to kind of leave you guys with a cliffhanger and some tea. Um, but yeah, let's just hop right into it. My first kind of relationship with tech started in um i would say like early high school maybe late middle school so i tell this story all the time when i do job interviews <laughs> so i've told it so many times where like i start to get the details wrong but um you know i was i was my early adolescent years my early preaching years my space was super hot and i really prided myself on you know creating a myspace page that was really cute really fly really different and of course we all know that um you know that ui is html code and i you know just like everyone at that time in myspace went and would look at you know different configurations that would make your page do different things like your sound player or remove your sound player or you know remove your friends bar the top eight or whatever things of that nature so I started to kind of get a peak of interest with MySpace, so shout out to Tom. At that time, I really had a natural aptitude for math as well. Like, I scored really high on the math section of the ACT. I mean, SAT, girl. I did not take the ACT. I scored really high on the math section of the SAT, like, exponentially higher than um, the uh, reading comprehension portion when it was a part of the SAT. And then, oh, no, 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 the writing portion. The writing portion is what got taken out, I think. But back when I took the SAT, you had to take all three. And my math score was exponentially higher than the other two. So I naturally had an aptitude for math. Um, you know, I really fucked with the way like I had to like do the HTML code on MySpace. And then also my dad works as a software engineer and always has. <clears throat> so I grew up knowing that he does work with computers. And so when it was time for me to major for college, I had all those things into consideration because I didn't want to study dance. Um, even though I grew up with dance, I didn't want to study it. And I definitely didn't want to study it at the University of Maryland. I'm not being shady, I promise. But I just didn't want to depend on dance for my livelihood. I wanted to keep it a hobby and something that I did for fun. So I was like, what else can I major in? And computer science made sense because I was like, hey, I'm kind of good at math. I fucked up in my space. My dad does this free tutor, free consultant, boom, perfect. Um, if you went to UMD, you know, CMNS 131, I quickly realized that HTML is like not like real programming. It's programming, like now in hindsight, my mentality in that, um, you know, intro class, I was just like, this is not 
what I was doing on MySpace. Not at all. It was very, very difficult for me. I wasn't like my most of my counterparts where, you know, they got either like an intro to programming school in the high school. I did not. Or they like coded for fun in their childhood or growing up. I did not. Literally my first line of code that I wrote, like a program was in college. And that that learning gap was super apparent for me and I had to work really, really hard to be up to speed with my counterparts who already kind of understood the concepts. Um, but like I said, I did have my dad as a resource, which was insanely helpful. He would literally stay up because I was like, I was a student athlete as well. I was on a, a Maryland dance team. So like I would have practices or games and I really wouldn't get to my studies until like 10 p.m. after a game or after practice. And, you know, I had deadlines and my dad would literally stay up sometimes till like two o'clock in the morning or would wake up super early at like 6 a.m. to help me finish projects like over WebEx because like Zoom and Skype weren't like really a thing back then. Um, so I really, really love him always and still to this day, child, and we'll get to that, is a really, really, really great resource and influence and inspiration in my tech career. I ended up doing a couple of internships. I did intern for my dad. Um, my In between my sophomore and junior year, that was my first tech internship um, at Amber Road. And then the next year, um, one of my good girlfriends who was in the computer science department, she introduced me to an internship at Booz Allen Hamilton, the consulting company. And I did that. I got in. I did that. And I had a great time. That was the time where I built my first iOS application from literally requirements to getting it approved to the app store. And I was like, this is super fulfilling to literally watch your application or just something come to life and just know that like I coded that. So that was really like my taste of the industry for real, which is our internships are supposed to do. And I was like, this low key is cool. This is hard, but this is low key cool. Um, and then I actually went on to, they gave me an offer after that. So I did have an offer going into my senior year of college. So before I even stepped onto campus for my senior year. So that made me, you know, feel really good going into senior year because senior year is when you go in and you're like hustling and bustling to get your offer for post-graduation employment and you know what I mean I hope I don't get in trouble for this I don't think I will but of course I was interviewing other places and I started to get you know interview requests from big tech companies like Google Twitter Amazon and um you know what I mean and they went really well I ended up not getting any offers from them but I always got to like the last round of interviews which at that time meant a big deal to me it still means a big deal to me um at that time because I was like I literally just picked this up not even you know four years ago and how cool would it be to work for this really you know prestigious tech company like Amazon for example they they actually flew me out for my last interview and that was the first time that I um went across the country no <laughs> that is not true I was about to say that's the first time I went across the country by myself but that is not true um that's the first time I've been to Seattle let me be factual first time I've been to Seattle they flew me out by myself paid for everything it was a really like you know really cool experience as someone who was relatively new in the tech industry about just like the opportunity the wealth obviously and just like how far you can go um, so I did end up working for Booz Allen Hamilton for about two and a half years as a junior dev or entry level software engineer. Had a pretty good time. Um, I just had like a, a moment where I didn't necessarily agree with how it was handled just kind of on the HR side, which I'll get to in my Q&A. Not HR, but like just kind of people side and it, it did start to affect my mental and my work and just going into work obviously pre-covid and so i decided to go somewhere else for work um and go to a smaller consulting firm because i did like consulting um and i went to a company called sila solutions group which still does exist um but i don't think their practice for like engineering is as vast but and we'll get to that um i worked for sila solutions group for about a year um, doing pretty much the same thing. Actually, I had the exact same client. Uh, and then out the blue, Sila um, Solutions Group got acquired by this massive consulting firm 
called Ernst & Young. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's in the big four. It's a really, you know, prestigious consulting firm to work for. So I found myself literally after a year back at a big <laughs> consulting firm. Um, but I, I took the opportunity. I was like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, this is where, you know, God wants me to be. He'll show and present that opportunity in the package. And the opportunity seemed to be a fit. And so I actually started working for EY uh, November or December of 2019. And then obviously 2020 happened. Um, and I started obviously continued employment with them, but it was completely remote. And I... I am currently and still in the company in that role. So when I transitioned to Ernst & Young, that's when I got promoted to senior software engineer. So I still currently work as a senior software engineer for Ernst & Young, supporting federal government contract work. But, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, I won't be saying that for long. I currently have offers and then pending offers for my next opportunity. So stay tuned to my next videos to figure out what I decide to do and what my next career move is. It'll be super exciting, but that's really kind of my track with tech. Um, I do want to shout out Techsgiving. I work with a lot of like um, groups, support groups, nonprofits that help i'm really passionate about diversity in tech obviously i'm a black woman you know what i mean i'm very much so very black i'm very much so very woman in every aspect of the world how i act how i conduct myself it's actually crazy because i usually have really long acrylics because <laughs> i just like them um but i'm about to get my nails done so you're not gonna see them in this video but maybe my next one um so like i switch up my hair often i do wear makeup i have lash extensions i have long acrylic nails so i'm not really modest in um how i present myself i don't whitewash my appearance or the way that i talk i don't you know defeminize my appearance or the way that i talk it's very much so you you know you see what you get and i do that in interviews as well because i don't want to work for a company where it's not conducive to my blackness and my womanhood um from the jump you know what i mean like we ain't, we're not doing that i'm not doing that girl it's it's not that deep i will find someone to hire me so i'm not like desperate to you know conform to what society says a a, a software engineer or a senior software engineer should look act or walk like not doing it um back when i used to cheer at the nfl like that was also something that i had to keep in mind is that like i do also have a part-time job and it also makes me very visible <laughs> like i'm in i'm on the cover of swimsuit calendars i'm you know what i mean like i'm on tv i used to have co-workers would be like hey like were you at the redskins game last night because i i Sometimes I was selectively open with, you know, just sharing. It's more so like if it came up, I would talk about it, but I'm not about to go into the office and be like, hey guys, my name is Candace, I'm a Redskins cheerleader. Like, no, it doesn't ever have to give that because it will give, and it does give me a lot of like unwanted attention. But like sometimes in the office, like my boss one time, and I really, really love her. She was great. When I first like joined her team, she was like, or my old boss, she's not my current boss, but my old boss, she was like, hey, was you at the Redskins game last night? And I was like, yeah. And like, I would just kind of leave it at that to see like how they respond. She was like, yeah, I, I think I saw you on TV as a cheerleader. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I actually, um, you know, I, I do cheer for the, Was the, the Redskins at that time or the Washington football team. I would be referring to them as that from here on now. Um, but yeah, I did. I am a cheerleader for the Washington football team. And of course, she responded great. Everyone's always just really interested with how I balance both, how I maneuver both of those spaces. Um, and it is pretty unique to be a black woman in tech, but also be a black woman in the NFL. And we'll kind of get to that in my Q and A's. I think we should just go ahead and dive right into it. So someone had asked me, um, you know, they want me to speak or talk about some things employers have done to support you and also some things that they have not done to support me. 
um, which is a really great question because that's something that you definitely want to think about and in the industry with looking for a possible employer. In fact, as I'm interviewing right now, I always ask like, what do you do to make your people feel special outside of their work? Because their work does not define them. So what do you do to make your people feel valuable? Um, and I've definitely had my share of really great experiences. I've also had, you know, not great experiences. Those are all natural for anyone of any color, any gender. Um, any industry for real but you know my situation is pretty unique um, I've had instances where employers are super understanding with my schedule especially when I used to cheer about how maybe I, I need to leave at 4 30 on the dot I can't work late um, or I need to work remote today because I have a night game and we're going to be at the stadium at one you know what I mean or something like that or hey I'm going to Cabo to shoot bikini pictures for our calendar I need to take two weeks off or whatever like for the most really for all of the you know in my experience when I cheered everyone was super 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 digestive of that and very much so understanding work-life balance is something that I immediately have a radar of when I'm interviewing for positions so I think I, I strike pretty much you know gold every time I go for that um I think things that you know the tech industry as a whole, so I'm not targeting a specific employer, person, team, anything of that. The tech industry as a whole still has a lot of work to do in supporting just black women. Um, last time I, I checked and I Googled and I'll, I'll probably add um, a source in my description box. Last or when I graduated, only 1% of computer scientists, so not computer science majors, but actual professional computer scientists were black women. 1%. So that means literally if you if all the computer scientists in the world were just 100 people, only one of the, those 100 people were a black woman. In fact, when I graduated, it was only two of us. And I still keep in contact with her and she's cool. She's actually on YouTube too. I will put her YouTube channel in here because she's super smart, super cool. I really, really fuck with her. Um, so I definitely want to shout her out. But we was just it was just us two graduating that year. So it's just not much of us. So just diversity goes with yes taking in a wider pool of different types of people whether it be looks gender ability um or not looks race child race gender ability culture um and adopting kind of culture styles that um accommodate all of these types of people is something that still it is trying to grow <laughs> but has a lot of work to do i think that it's not just hiring more black women you got to think about what what people do to retain black women, to promote black women, to recruit black, black women into the industry. So not just for a role or a company, like how are we raising our black women to be computer scientists? That starts from, you know, in middle school, high school, why are coding classes not offered in predominantly black neighborhoods and school systems? Things of that nature. Um, so I think that that's something that I still kind of struggle with or just also just you know black womanhood and my presence and the fact that like I change my hair often and that being a topic of conversation or um you know what I mean like how I talk um and, and things of that nature really like the nuances of black womanhood is not always digestible just in corporate America and this is something that all industries really struggle with um, but it's just so present and apparent in the tech industry again one percent um so really i think that's the biggest thing is that knowing the nuances of the culture of black people in general because there's not a lot of black people here but obviously in my situation i'm super passionate about black women and black womanhood um so things of that nature i uh i had an experience with a prior employer where you know being a woman in tech you're you're always you know unfortunately in a man's world your meetings you're the only one i not just are the only women you're the only black woman so naturally it's a little intimidating for all parties included i had i'm gonna name two kind of story times the first where i started to feel really black womany in tech is when you know we would do scrums every day or every other day i forget and we would you know be in stand-ups in our circles and like i started to literally get skipped over in these meetings so like let's say bob is to my um right and um billy is to my left i'm just making up names 
Bob will go and say his status report and literally Billy right after would go and talk. And like, I would literally be in shock, but also I would kind of sink into a shell a little bit because I felt literally invisible. Like, do you not see me right here? <laughs> like, I have to say my status. And like, I was a little young in my career and young in age. So I was definitely a little nervous to like stand up for myself. So like I would start by just like, oh, you guys forgot me. And at the end, it'd be like, oh, here's my status. And it kept happening and it kept happening. And like I would go to the bathroom in the basement of the building that I worked out and I would literally would cry. Because after a while, you it, it starts to mess with your mental. And you're like, damn, am I invisible? Like I know they say like black women don't exist in tech spaces but like i literally feel like i do not exist like you guys are acting like i literally don't exist and then one day i'm just fed up <laughs> and let's say bob wins at his status and billy started speaking i said nope i'm next my status is da, 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 da. and i i went and like i literally interrupted him but i didn't interrupt him i rightfully said because i was right there i'm next i rightfully said my piece and um it took him a while to like stop talking like we were talking at the same time for a minute and i'm like this is so weird this is so crazy but i have to stand on this i have to make my presence known and i did and it never happened again but still you know those feelings kind of stay with you so it just never you know what i mean like that always just kind of was in the back of my head or a little chip on my shoulder even though i started to kind of stand up for myself a separate incident that happened like not too long after that which a lot of women i feel like can attest to in the workplace is that like i was working one day because i would i used to come into work a little early because i would leave earlier when i cheered so i'll come to work early i'm doing my thing literally just like this doing my thing and i feel a man like literally come up and rub my arm and be like good morning what you're working on and by instinct i literally jump because i'm at work and i feel a man hand caressing my arm and I, I saw who it was and saw that obviously it was not a co-worker but someone who just you know frequent the office and worked there and I was just a little frozen and he I, honestly I don't remember I just kind of black, blacked out in that situation because I was like is this man really rubbing me at work and like it's, it was a shared office space it wasn't like I was in a cubicle or anything or in a private room like it was very open and I'm like and none of you motherfuckers see that and not about to protect or help or call him out and so it took me a while because i was like wait did that really just happen um and i called my boss or i told my boss when he came in and he told me he was like no that was absolutely unacceptable da, da, da. he was super compliant or whatever and understanding he was like you need to report this to hr and i did um and then i i just felt so violated i left for work for the rest of the day and I cried and I called my mom and you know what I mean because I just want to make sure that like that shit ain't right and like I I, I just want a validity in my feelings and you know I got that from everyone that I talked to I submitted everything HR they called me followed up did their due diligence and like you can track like those um those things and like the system and I saw that like never nothing ever really came from it and I guess I don't I was about to say I guess I don't really know what you can do but you can kick him out the fucking office I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on YouTube, so I'm not gonna do it no more. But you can kick him out the office, but I didn't. I I literally saw him every day after that, and it it absolutely traumatized me um, to the point where obviously I decided I can't be in this work environment anymore, and that's when I decided to obviously pursue other opportunities. So that was a long answer, but things that employers have done to support me, and things that employers haven't done to support me. Next, um, someone had asked things that has helped you in your interview process. Woo, child, the relevancy. Interviewing in tech, honey, is a part-time job in itself. Um, if you're not familiar, it's at minimum like a four interview process at max i would say like six or seven like i'm going through i'm wrapping up an interview process i think i'm literally on maybe my seventh interview and you know you obviously you write code for them you talk to them you do behavioral interviews you know you do kind of um human resource kind of stuff but the bulk of that 
because you're interviewing for a tech role is that you write code back before you know covid you would literally whiteboard so you don't have a compiler you don't have a library you know to kind of depend on you would literally write this code on a whiteboard and a marker and i'm like that's so intimidating and a guy is just sitting there on the table or a girl sitting on the table watching you and you know you talk through your decisions but still i literally used to be sweating and shaking and nervous because that's just not real life like even though like i know how to code um i very much so am pro compiler which everyone is obviously pro resource whether it's google stack overflow youtube um or a co-worker like i'm very much so a collaborative engineer and so when you interview you don't have any of that so it's definitely a little scary um pre-covid obviously it was even scarier now like i find that the interview process will they'll give you like a take-home project where you just clone a repo and you you know fulfill those requirements which honestly i do enjoy um or a live like shared screen kind of coder pad or code.io um you know compiler online where they just kind of see you going as you go which like that i don't i mean that's cool whatever i it's interviewing for tech always makes me nervous because it's just like in real life, like I take time to digest my requirements, my design choices. And, you know, when you interview, you're on the time limit. You have 45 minutes, an hour, you know, two hours, whatever. And it's just like, ooh, like I get it, but it's definitely not the funnest thing. So things that I feel have helped me in this process was the Cracking the Code Coding Interview book, which is super resourceful. I have it. I've had it for years. I still pull it out, even as a senior um, in my interview process that I went through just currently or are still going through, I rely on it. Um, there's a ton of online resources that mock kind of that tech interview process that are super helpful. You can literally get sick of practicing for tech interviews, but I think it's super important to just like also not freak out. And I'm talking to myself with this as well, not freak out and just sometimes take a break, take a step back trust yourself um and just be really confident as well the interview process for tech roles i feel like is super intimidating and for <clears throat> anyone i feel like it can make them kind of sweat a little bit so i think just also taking time to really just you know manifest whatever opportunity is here for you believe in your your work that you have done so with that being said like going into former projects or former roles on your resume just kind of refreshing the concepts or the frameworks or the languages that you used um just kind of getting familiar with that my biggest really seller for interviews and i think what makes me kind of stand out is that like i'm very much so myself in interviews i'm not pitching you know what i mean i'm not proposing to be anyone i'm not i'm also not going to fake like i know something that i'm not like in my interview today like i think i did really well but he asked a question about something and i was like hey you know truthfully i haven't used you know that that technology but i'm super open to learning more about it as i see that it's important for this opportunity at company x um so i'm not about to be like oh yeah like i heard of it let me try you know really hard to think about something that just I didn't do or didn't work on i personally think that there's more value in just being honest and saying like i don't know but i would like to know and i'm willing to learn um so don't be afraid to be like yeah i'm not sure <laughs> and just like because they can tell when you're faking child you know what i mean no everyone can tell anyway um <clears throat> another question asks what advice would you give someone pursuing a degree or, or career in computer science I think my biggest advice would to one, you know, figure out if this is something that you really want to do. And I purposely didn't say that you're passionate about because I'm very big proponent or you don't have to be passionate about something to want to pursue it. You can be passionate about what this gives you. Like I'm, I'm, I, I like to code. I like tech. I wouldn't do anything else, but am I passionate about coding for the federal government? Do you see me? Do I look like I'm passionate about writing code? You know what I mean? For like for the federal government or for whatever. No, I'm passionate about getting this money, learning a lot and having the lifestyle that I want to uphold. And that what drives me to work hard at work. And that is okay as well. Anyway, so I will figure out like, is this something that I think is worthwhile for whatever goal I is? If I'm passionate about the industry directly or if I'm passionate about what the industry and the opportunities it gave me. Figure that out. Once you feel 
more confident in that. I obviously went to school for CS. I am a huge proponent of education in school, but I also understand that that's just not a realistic avenue for everyone for multiple reasons. But in some sense, you do need to get ramped up really heavily on the education aspects of computer science. So whether it's actual school, boot camps, online resources, actual books, um, and just kind of getting your feet and your hands dirty pretty immediately. I would say that like, be prepared to not grasp concepts immediately. Be prepared to be frustrated. Be prepared to fail. Be prepared to not be able to solve problems the first night, second night, third week. Like be prepared to literally always be learning and be humbled in this industry. Awesome. So next person asks, what would you recommend the best programming language to learn for beginners? Um, this is pretty broad. I guess like it depends on like what your goal is, but the first programming language I learned, which I'm not counting, counting HTML from my space will be Java. And I still personally think that Java um, is a really great language to be your first language, but really you can start with any of them um, because once you learn one or two child, you can pick up any because you start to see the similarities and how they all function. It's really the concepts and how to think like a programmer that's important. But in, I personally believe that Java is a really good, just object-oriented programming language, obviously, to understand how um, computer science works and should work. And there's a lot of, of course, resources to help you learn that. It's the first language I learned. I still use it, actually. I still, I actually, I always interview in Java because I feel like it's the first one I learned. It's the one that I've known the longest. It's the one that I'm just most proficient in and completely honest. Next question. How do you manage your career and your lifestyle without being overwhelmed? Girl, I be getting overwhelmed, honey. I literally, I call my man or my dad. Like, it happens like once a month, like in tears. It's like, I can't do it. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so stressed. I can't get this. I got to book that. I have an interview for this. I need to go and dance and teach a class here. Da, da, da. Um, Cause I do teach dance about like three times a week. So my afternoons are pretty booked. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm very much so a busy girl, mentally, physically. I got a lot going on. Um, so I definitely do get overwhelmed. A way in which I'm trying to implement and my boyfriend is so good about reminding me of this when I feel these feelings is that like obviously like a calendar helps but also just knowing how to say no to things and not take on everything. Um, and just knowing your limits. If you know that you can handle a full-time job in CS and a part-time job somewhere else like me, I know I can handle that because I've always been a student athlete um then it's a go you know what i mean you just got to make sure you also have the resources and the support system to help you with that but if you know like i just literally i know i can't focus on anything else outside of work because then i start to get stressed anxiety overwhelmed stick with that stick with that um but i definitely do be getting overwhelmed but that typically happens when i'm saying yes too much so girl my answer would be say no you know what i mean like let that be a life lesson to you know people in tech people with multiple jobs women black people everybody um there there is so much glory in saying no um someone asked are there any certifications that you recommend getting oh certifications are also a great you know tool when someone asks what advice or what helps you know what i mean like um education yes and that obviously certifications is under that umbrella um, also depends on what you want to do and I hate I know you guys probably hate that answer but I found that my first year of working I was just getting ramped up I wasn't really on any client work and when I was doing client work it wasn't really too demanding I was so focused on using that time to ramp up on getting certifications I got two AWS certifications one in um, sysops administrator and the other this the develop sorry the developer certification and really, um, I learned a lot about cloud because cloud is super hot, obviously. Um, and just a lot about Amazon Web Services as well. There's so many like good classes. Uh, a cloud guru was where I learned to get my certifications. But like, you know, really popular ones like AWS certs, Azure certs, um, CISSP, security certs. It just depends on what you want to do. There's database certs. 
Um, I'm currently in the identity and access management role, so I have a certification from uh, SailPoint and CyberArk. So things of that nature, it just always depends on what you want to do. But you want to also see like what's profitable. And that's why I chose AWS as my first couple certifications to get because there is a, a glitz and a glam of having that on my resume. So, and they're, and they're not too crazy hard. You dedicate some time, some good resources, you can absolutely knock those out. Awesome. One question said, how did you know what area in tech to pursue? Um, I guess like my dad was really the biggest kind of influence on he on me with this. So I, I self identify as a back end engineer, but different realms could be front end engineer. Um, and if you don't know the difference between back end, back end is um, like the actual code that pushes that does the functions and the logic for whatever program you're writing. And front end is kind of the face of it, how the UI, the user interface and the user experience interacts with the code. So when you press submit the submit button is the ui the front end but the back goes and takes that logic from submit and send it to whatever you know next step whether it's a data stream or something like that so there's front end engineers there's back end engineers there's someone's called full stack engineers which does both there's database administrators which obviously you know is responsible for maintaining the database there's cloud engineers which is self-explanatory there are security engineers um so really think about again like what you have an aptitude for because of course you want to be good and marketable and also continue to grow in the area um but my dad was a, is a back-end engineer and so that's just kind of what i knew and that's what they teach you in school at least at the university of maryland it's, it's kind of more back-end heavy you do have database classes which was an elective you do have ui classes which was an elective you do also have um like you know operating things like operating systems and like hardware and things of that nature which are niches in tech as well um but the computer science department was pretty back end heavy so that's was how you know i figured i was like look i got this degree in this i'm gonna stick with that again my dad does it free tutor y'all know the deal y'all know how that shit go awesome uh, the last question is, what certs are the most valuable right now? I transitioned to IT about a year ago, and I'm wondering which one um, I should work on obtaining. Again, that kind of goes with the last question I answered with, you know what I mean? What are you doing in IT? Who are you working for? What goals do you want? Um, I will Google uh, like most profitable, most profitable show, most profitable uh, certifications um in it right now and see like you know what makes the most money you know what i mean that's what i did when i <laughs> was like i don't know what to do and i saw that aws was pretty and i went to that also you know what i mean like some certifications literally require like a financial commitment to even educate so like consider that as well some like some ones are expensive to even take classes from like i think cissp like was even discounted at my former job but was still pretty um expensive to take the aws is pretty expensive as well so like think about those things as well when you think about what you want to invest your time in and also you know therefore invest your money in um but yeah those are all my questions i am so happy to be here i'm so happy to be talking about tech and just embracing all of the techie that i am and been not hiding but i guess suppressed for the past few years so i'm glad we can kick things off with a q a and just like an intro to my experience in the technology industry oh is my dog coming y'all want to see my dog <laughs> she's been a rabbit i've had her since um high school come here biscuit so she's been here you know my whole career she likes to nap all day while I work from home, but then when I hop on a Teams or Zoom call, play with her food and make noise and bark at the mailman or things of that nature. So she likes to make her presence known. I had an interview yesterday and literally she was quiet all day, sleep all day. The second I started my interview, she literally started to yapping and I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I literally had to be like, girl, I'm doing business. Do you want some new dog food? I need to get another job so I can afford her specialized dog food. But 
anyway i hope that was a really good introduction to me my channel my type of content i will also be conducting and posting a personal slash dance cheer just non-tech related q a on my channel soon um and at the end of that video i will also let you guys know what opportunity i will be pursuing next in my career so stay tuned follow me on all socials i'm on instagram at candice i'm also on twitter at candice please rate comment and subscribe that's the first time i've ever said that but please rate comment and subscribe give me ideas like what type of content you want to see i'm super obviously into hair makeup as well um so yeah let me know what you guys want from my channel and thank you guys so much for watching <laughs>